As we know, the three modes of heat transfer are conduction, which is heat transfer associated with random molecular motion, radiation, which is heat transfer associated with electromagnetic waves or through electromagnetic waves, and convection. And in this section, we're going to discuss convection and understand better when convection processes occur. So, what is convection? Convection is heat transfer associated with some sort of bulk fluid motion. And unlike conduction, where no other analysis is required except for the energy equation with a constitutive relation, and that constitutive relation is Fourier's law, for convection, this requires us to also have some sort of fluid mechanics analysis. And we'll see the fluid mechanics analysis, as we say here, rests on understanding mass conservation and momentum conservation. Natural convection occurs in daily life, whether that is a natural convection process associated with heating of water in a pot. And so you see that in that heating process, the natural convection circuits occur, or the heating processes that occur within a room associated with, uh, this is a radiator here, or the processes that might occur within a refrigerator. Convection processes occur on all sorts of different length scales. And geophysical natural convection processes occur in planetary systems, in terrestrial systems. They're associated with temperature differences between land and sea that might generate some sort of local wind, or uh, plumes that might occur because of uh, local hotspots that induce thermals and allow birds and gliders to uh, stay aloft. Unlike natural convection, which is associated with density differences, forced convection is associated with some sort of prime mover, oftentimes a pump or blower. And in this case, the density differences can be relatively small across the flow system. Obviously, forced convection processes occur, again, in a range of uh, systems and devices, whether that is a cooling system with a car or the air conditioning and HVAC system within a home. Often we characterize convection processes as being either internal convection processes or external convection processes. External convection processes are flows where the constraints of the boundary, so it's oftentimes we have some sort of boundary, so we may have a block within a wind tunnel and the block geometry is sufficiently small compared to the wind tunnel geometry that we might be able to assume that the length scale of the block or the region of interest is small compared to some other large geometric length scale in the problem. And we might characterize this as a external problem from the perspective of the block, but, but an internal convection problem from the perspective of the wind tunnel. And this is something that's actually quite typical because uh, imagine analyzing the heat transfer processes within a uh, computer chassis or tower. And on the scale of the individual boards that you might have in that system and the chipsets within it, these could look like external flow problems. So we have some sort of flow, mean flow within these channels. And on the length scale associated with the overall system. So we may have some sort of fan, for example, that's uh, taking hot, get hot uh, air out of the top of this. And so there's a mixed internal flow and external flow problem. So one of the things that we're going to uh, spend time doing is understanding how to characterize problems as being either internal flow or external flow problem. And so this is the mixed analysis that I'm talking about that there are problems in which we use multiple scales to understand and analyze the problem. So we may, for example, on the global scale, understand what the environmental temperature is. So some sort of T infinity from the perspective of this local scale or of this plate. So we use the global scale to characterize, to define the boundary conditions for 
some local scale. And again, this local scale is maybe what we might consider an external flow process, whereas the global scale is something that we might consider as an internal flow process. Another way that we characterize convection problems is turbulent versus laminar processes. In laminar flows, the mixing of whether it's momentum for multi-component systems, chemical species, energy, etc., is by molecular diffusion. Where in turbulent flow, it's actually the velocity that causes the mixing processes. And so here's a boundary layer where one sees the types of mixing processes in the eddies that are caused by a uh, turbulent flow. And here we look at a turbulent jet flow, an exit flow. And again, it's characterized by large scale mixing processes. A standard system to understand laminar versus turbulent flows is the taylor Coet flow. And the taylor Coet flow is an annular flow where there's a velocity for the inner uh, cylinder and the outer cylinder has a velocity equal to zero. So there's a relative velocity between the inside and the outside. Under laminar conditions, you see these, and that's to the left here, you see this regular structure and there's no intermixing across the different uh, axial locations as compared to the turbulent mixing on the right where there's considerable uh, variation there. So we're gonna talk about what constitutes the governing equations for these systems and what type of analysis generally is prescribed for these types of systems.